Hi, Gloria. How you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. Okay. I'll be mostly listening today. I'm on my way to my doctor's appointment. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I'm on my way to my doctor's appointment. Okay. Okay. Laura, do you, do you have any questions on anything that I can help you with before I get into my, my stuff? Is there anything that you have any questions on? Yes, I'm the uh, individual project. Okay. Uh, what do we supposed to do that uh, name the account like? Oh, the one say invest it. What do I put like um uh, cash uh, debit the hundred thousand and the equity credit hundred thousand? Okay, That's so. Equity is not a bad idea. That's the general category. You want to be more specific and actually credit capital. Oh, credit cap. I was so wondering. Going to debit the was cap. So when an owner makes an investment, you will mm -hmm. debit whatever they invest. Normally it's cash, but they could invest equipment too. But you would basically debit, debit cash and credit capital. Oh, okay. I was wondering, was it going to be capital or the equity? Yeah, and usually the owner's name precedes the word capital. So make sure if they if they give you that, make sure you put that in. Okay, the name not there, so I don't have to put the name. Just okay. Let, uh, let me just let me capital. go. Let me go check the assignment real quick, just okay. to make sure. Um, we're both on the same page here. So give me yeah, a quick, I think it's, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Great question. I'm so glad you brought it up. Yeah. I think it said invested in the business. Correct. So, mm -hmm. so you still would debit cash and credit capital. Okay. That's now, what I, the, the, so now to know exactly what names you're allowed to use, in the problem, there should be <laughs> something called a chart of accounts. Mm -hmm. So if you check out the chart of accounts, you should see the owner's name in front of capital. Oh, uh, yeah, I've seen one say that. Okay, so had somebody I, name. Yeah, so I think oh. the owner's name is Milo T. Jones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so when you open that chart of accounts, those are the only account names you're allowed to use when you debit and credit. Oh, okay. okay. So let's say just for example, you know, uh, you read a question that says, oh, perform the service and you credit service revenue. Technically it's wrong because you're supposed to credit coffee revenue. So you've got to use only the names that they give you in the chart of accounts. Oh, okay. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. So uh, don't abbreviate them. Uh, don't reverse their order. Those are the only accounts that are in play. Okay. And after we do that, anything else? Uh, just do it each question like that. The yeah. So, okay. yeah, looking at the, the question, uh, it says... Um, Let's see here. Prepare the 10 transactions below. Put them in the general journal. Uh, you should use an Excel spreadsheet, blah, 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 uh, when you're done. So this is actually less work than I showed you guys in my class example uh, back in week two. So back in week two, we did journal, we posted to the ledger, and then we did a trial balance. All they want you to do is do the journal. So you're just doing step one. Oh, okay. So you're doing less work than I would have expected you to do if I yeah, was Yeah, I thought I was uh, thinking I had to add more to it than that. No, that, you're, that would be normal. Like if I designed this question, you'd be doing all the steps, but they're just having you do step one. Okay. So I'm looking at the question 
And it says, review this model assignment before beginning this assignment. So if you, right above the transactions, they have like a little blue link and it shows an example of like, uh, it does like three examples of how, you know, it's supposed to look. So if you look at that, that'll also <laughs> give you a little bit of a, of a heads up. Oh, okay. Okay. And then make sure you use the template that they supplied you. And uh, you should be good to go. Uh, okay. Yeah. But it's just week four, huh? Yeah. Yeah. One more, <laughs> one more live session to go, and this semester's done. Yeah. <laughs> crazy how fast these five and a half weeks go it's uh yeah. you know of all the colleges that i teach at this is the fastest one you know another college i teach at we go eight weeks the other college i teach at we go 15 weeks another one is 16 weeks this is five <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's like light speed it's like you got rockets on your butt in this class <laughs> it sure is it's just right fast <laughs> yeah. So today what we're going to be doing once uh, it's officially starting time, okay. uh, I'm going to be going over FIFO, LIFO, um, specific identification and weighted average. So this will be the material that that's covered today. Okay. Yeah, I've been reading over them. Yeah. All right. This like the first in, first out, last in, first out. Yep, hand. yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So any company that uh, has merchandise that they buy and sell for a living, uh, they would have to use one of these methods to help track their inventory. Yeah, because I used to uh, supervise like uh, restaurants and kitchens, and I had oh, nice. my yeah, I had my own for years, and I used to do that first day and first out. Gotcha. Because uh, you know when the grocery come in, you had to date it. We labor date it. And take all the old stuff and put on top and our new stuff at the bottom. Right, right. And what's interesting is that from an accounting standpoint, even though like in a restaurant, you have to use FIFO or you're going to be using old, ugly stuff that never gets right. used. They right? get expired, right. Right, a exactly. But from an accounting point of view, you could actually use a different accounting method than you actually do in reality. So right. you have to use FIFO in a restaurant, but on the books, you can use LIFO if it gives you a tax advantage. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, so even though you are still using FIFO in reality, but on books, you can use any of the four techniques because the government says and the accounting world says, hey, whichever one works best for you economically that's the one you can use like on your taxes and on your that's uh, like uh, have a uh, write-off or something right it, it helps you with a better write-off so the more you write off the less yeah. tax you end yeah. up paying so that's kind of like the theory so they know some places they have to use fifo and just like you right. said in the restaurant business but sometimes lifo will give them a better result for their taxes. So the no, government says, okay, you end. can use LIFO, yeah. but you know, it doesn't matter how you do it in real life, you can use whatever technique works best for you on paper. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's two more minutes and then we'll get that started. Let me uh, bring up my okay. spreadsheet here. Okay. And hopefully, you're able to see it. Yeah. 
Okay, good. I'm using my phone, but it's a little small on here. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Definitely need like a magnifying glass. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let okay. me get started. Okay, me too. I'll be leaving home in about the next 30 minutes. Okay. So, uh, okay. Thank All you right. for the information. Okay, so yeah. So you can see the screen you said, right? You can see where it says FIFO at the top? Yes. All right, wonderful. So when it comes to these techniques, I'm gonna actually type a little bit in the chat box uh, just to give you a little bit of information. So first off, FIFO stands for first in, first out. And the out basically is in reference to what is sold. So think yeah. of out as really meaning sold. And then you've got LIFO uh, that stands for last in, first out. And again, out meaning sold. Then there's another technique called SID or specific identification. specific ID. And then there's a fourth one, which we refer to as weighted average. Okay. So these are the four uh, techniques that are in play when you're trying to monitor your inventory. So there are two types of inventory systems. Yeah. And one of them is called perpetual, and the other one is called periodic. Now, you mentioned that you used to work in a restaurant, and restaurants are the ones that would use periodic. Uh, all, right. all other businesses, especially those businesses that, you know, the product contains like a barcode on the packaging, any packaging that has a barcode. Uh, they're using the perpetual technique, okay? So yeah. it's just easy to, you know, you scan something in off the truck, you load it, you know, you, you put it into the store shelves. As soon as the customer buys it, the cashier scans it out. So because of the scanning ability, thanks to the barcode, you're able to kind of keep track of your inventory easier. Right. If you're in a restaurant business, you're not, you know, if you're making right. like a taco, how are you going to scan you know, that meat you just weighed that's being put in the taco, it's very difficult to use barcoding in a restaurant. You can do some of it, but not every single aspect. So no, because most, most of the time, what I had to uh, get a marker and write the date on everything when it come in. Right. You know, to keep up with what date was came in and what was been there. Exactly. So... Uh, when you're using periodic, it seems like the restaurants can't really use the, the barcoding as well as all other products. So, um, so you're absolutely right. It's a whole different animal, no doubt about it. The technique that I'm showing you here, however, is not the technique that would be used in a restaurant. This is what you would be using if you are in the barcoding system. So uh, you can see above all of these charts here, perpetual FIFO, perpetual LIFO. If I scroll down, you'll see perpetual specific identification, perpetual weighted average. So these examples are all in that barcoding world. Now, you do have access to the textbook, whether it's a physical book or the ebook. So if you go and check out chapter six, whenever you have some free time, you will see the periodic version of how to do this. And it doesn't involve a chart. So, um, you know, you could almost argue it's actually easier to do the periodic than the perpetual, but nonetheless, in chapter six of your ebook, you will see 
both perpetual and periodic. I'm just choosing to do the, peri the perpetual one because it's a little harder. I wanna make sure everybody knows how to do this one, okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. okay. So the first technique, and by the way, over here to the right on the, on the, you see the data box, January 1st, January 3rd. This data box is the same pretty much all the way down the page, okay? So okay. I just want to let you know. So when we and when I scroll down, instead of having me go, well, what was the transaction on January 1st? I just recopied the data here on the right so that you know we don't have to scroll up and down every five seconds to get the information. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so it's the same data all the way through. And then we're going to see, hey, what are, what's the answer when we do FIFO? What's the answer when we do LIFO? So couple other things that you should be aware of, and you and I were talking uh, about the tax implication and the impact. And we were saying that even though you might physically use FIFO, because if you don't, you're going to have some old product that you're going to have to just get rid of and spoilage. But on the books, you can use FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, or specific identification, no matter how you physically move your inventory. And let me just give you a couple of things associated with taxes. So in periods of inflation, and inflation means rising prices. So when you have periods of inflation, the best technique to use on the books is LIFO. LIFO under rising prices will <clears throat> basically uh, you'll you'll get a like a higher write off when I say write off. I'm referring to you get a larger expense. That's what a write-off is. And in this little world that we're in, our write-off is our cost of goods sold. And thanks to having more of a write-off, we will have a lower net income or a lower taxable income. I kind of write all this and talk at the same time. Not so easy sometimes. <laughs> so hopefully you can see what I just typed. So in periods of inflation, rising prices, the best technique to use on the books is LIFO. LIFO under rising prices will increase your write-offs, like more expense, bigger cost of goods sold, and what's going to happen is your bottom line is going to look smaller. So your net income, your profit is going to look smaller, but you're, you're doing that on purpose because the lower your profit, the less tax you pay. Because let's right. say you have to pay like, you know, 30% on your bottom line. Well, if I make my bottom line look smaller, 30% of something smaller is less money out of my pocket to pay the government. So the right. government says, pick the one that you think is going to be the best for you, and we're okay with that. Oh. Okay. And then if you are in periods of deflation, FIFO is the best. Deflation basically means prices going down. And if you're wondering where the heck do prices go down, the tech industry, think of your cell phones, you know, allow the uh, iPhone 13 is being advertised on TV, right? Well, you know, in two years, probably the iPhone 14 is going to come out or iPhone i15. So in two years, if you want to buy the iPhone 13, it's going to be cheaper. a lot cheaper than the new ones, right? Right. right. So, the, so the tech industry wants to use FIFO because prices are constantly going down 
in their industry where a lot of other industries prices typically go up. However, if you're in like the oil industry, gasoline industry, prices go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. So you might want to use the weighted average technique. And then the most accurate, believe it or not, out of these four, the most accurate is SID, specific identification, but it's the least used because people aren't going for accuracy in terms of what their inventory is actually work, worth. They're going for what kind of a tax break can we get? So even though specific identification will be the most accurate, you're looking for which one is gonna give you the best tax advantage. So that's why SID is not used as much as FIFO and LIFO, okay? So yeah. let's go ahead and do this little problem that I've got here. The first one, we're gonna do FIFO and it says on January 1st, the beginning inventory consisted of 10 units at $2. So 10 times two is 20. 20. So what I'm gonna do here on the first line is I'm gonna write January 1st under the date. We did not purchase anything. We did not sell anything. So I'm gonna go right to my balance column, put 10 20. and then the 20. $2. And then 10. I'm gonna put 10 times two, which is the 20. 20. Into that third spot. And I'm gonna, since my data made it yellow, I'm gonna make this yellow here as well, just so you can tell where I got it from. Okay. Okay. And while I'm at it, Gloria, it's the same beginning balance for all of them. So I'm just going to go put this beginning information in all four charts. Okay. Okay, just to, hey, while we're here, let's just knock this one out. Hey, Paula, welcome. Okay, <clears throat> so the next thing I want to do is I want to continue working with FIFO here, and it says the next transaction, which is in green here, says we purchased four units at four dollars. At sixteen, at six, so a total of sixteen dollars. So because it's a purchase, I'm going to go. On the very next line, I'm gonna put January three. And then under the purchase column, I'm gonna report the information four units at $4. So do that math four times four, 16. Okay. But now this is where it gets extremely important how you do the balance column. Okay, and this goes back to how you were describing to me how important it was for you to date things in the restaurant business so you knew which ones to use first and you knew which ones to use second. Right. So we're going to kind of do the same thing. We know which ones we got on January 1st. We know which ones we got on January 3rd. In this balance column, this is where I got to keep track of the order of when they came in. So I'm purposely using different colors for each date to illustrate this. So on January 3rd, what you have to basically indicate is exactly what do we have in inventory. Now on January 1st, I had 10 at 2. On January 3rd, I still have 10 of the $2 ones. But now I also have four more, and these new four cost me four bucks. Right. So even though you see the one in yellow, you got to pretend you don't see what's in yellow, just for the point of this. In other words, if you didn't see that J in your first, this green one needs to tell me what exactly I have in inventory. I have 10 at two and I have four at four. 
So even so, though that tenant two was already there, that was there for January 1st. First, okay. I want to know what I have on January 3rd. So now I would take the $20 that I had, add the 16, and my total okay. inventory is $36. So I have right. $36 worth of inventory. So on January 1st, on the yellow date, I had $20 worth of inventory. Now on January 3rd, I bought, so, uh, bought $16 worth of more stuff. 16 plus okay. the 20 gives me 36. Okay, I was, take, so, I was subtracting that 16 uh, that were used, that was purchased, right? You bought them, right. So now okay, you have okay. even more inventory. Right. You so only subtract the, when you sell. When you, yeah, use it, sell it. Correct. Okay. So what did uh, four dollars come from after you use uh the ten and the sixteen? You've been used all that up when you get the four dollars. Well, we bought we bought the four units and they cost us four. So you can already see there's inflation happening because the original inventory, this is the, you know, we're selling one thing. Let's say we're selling coffee mugs. So the first coffee mugs we had in inventory only cost us two bucks. Now I go to the same vendor and I say, yeah, I want to buy four more coffee mugs. And now they're charged to me four for each mug. So you can see the prices are going up. You know, right. and that's so if we're paying more money, we're going to have to now sell it to our customers probably for more or else we're going to lose money. All right. So this perpetual inventory chart is only tracking our costs. It's not tracking how much we sell for. So oh, it's okay. just so right now, the inventory that we have in stock, we have actually 14 items, 10. Okay. And the two dollar ones, four of the four dollar ones. So we've got fourteen items, and these fourteen have cost us thirty six dollars so far. Okay. Okay. So now we go to do the next line, which is January tenth. And on January tenth, it says we sold six. So here comes the FIFO and the LIFO thinking. Here comes how you did things in the restaurant. FIFO stands for first in, first out. So here's our inventory. We're looking, our eyes should be in the green here, in the green balance column. Okay. I, Do it have so, the price of how much you sold them for? No, because this document does not track the selling price. This document just tracks the, the ones, the cost of those ones that we sold. Okay. okay, so I might sell these six for a hundred dollars each, but this does not show that. Okay. Okay, so that's a great question. If we were doing a journal entry, I would need to know that. But this document is costs only. Oh, okay. No, no revenue in here. So even though I sold six, the question is which six did I sell? Did I sell the two dollar ones? Or did I sell the $4 ones or a little bit of both? What's your guess if we're doing FIFO? Okay. So if we're doing FIFO, the first ones that came in are the first ones that are going out. So that'll be six of the $2 ones. You got it. Nice job. So the six are coming out of the $2 group. So six times two is 12. So that means that you have four of the uh, first ones you got for $2 left. You got it. So four at $2. And then the $4 ones, we still have all of them. We haven't got rid of them yet. All right. Okay. So okay. I had $36 worth of inventory and I just got rid of $12 worth of inventory. So I now have $24 worth of inventory. Okay. 
So basically, I just went 36 minus 12 and got 24. Yeah. I could have I could have also got 24 by going four times two is eight plus four times four is 16. Eight plus 16. That'll it's also 20. give me 24. Right. So when we go to do January 17th, you know. Uh, we're always working off of our most recent balance column. So now here we are on January 17th. We're now in the orange. And on the 17th, it says, hey, we went out and bought eight more. So these eight, Now these mugs are costing us $8 a piece. They originally what cost us two, and then they started costing us four. Now they're now costing they us eight. So price. this is totally inflation. But you're gonna go like, how many did they buy, eight? Right, eight at $8 nine. a piece. Eight times eight, okay. So eight times eight, $64. So right. now, what will my balance column look like? 64 plus the 24. Right, but I 80, gotta- 80, 88. But that, that's right. But I gotta remember, I have to put my balance column in the order the stuff arrived. So remember, I already had four at two. I already had four at four. And now I'm going to have eight at eight. 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 Mm -hmm. So it's important that I keep the chronological order going because if I don't, I'm going to get this FIFO LIFO stuff wrong every time. Mm -hmm. There's your 88 that you said. Mm -hmm. So the $88 is the final total, but what's more important is the order and the breakdown. You have to make sure the order remains the same. So you're gonna have four at two, and you still right. got your uh, four at four, and you still got eight at eight. Correct. Okay, so now here comes the exciting part. We have another sale on January 31st. Okay. And on January 31st, it <laughs> says we sold 10. The question is, which 10 did we sell? We should have sold the four at two first. Good. And uh, six at uh, four. Okay, but we don't have six at four. We don't oh, have we four six at four. four. So we're going to do the four at four, and then we're going to do the two at eight. Beautiful. You nailed it. So four at four. And then the other four. Oh, I'm sorry. Four at two. two my bad. And no, four. You're going to say like four. At, four. Right. Four, four at, at two. Four. And then four at four. And then we need two more from the $8 group. Make sense? Right. right. Okay. So let me do that math here real quick. We got four uh, times the two. 80. And then we uh, want to do four times four. 16. <clears throat> and then we want to do eight. two times eight. 24. So I come up with $40. 40. I'm talking about 30. <laughs> <laughs> so you still got $48 for folks. Okay. So what do we have left? We've got six left of the $8 eight. group. 48. Exit 48. And if, it, if we look at our numbers, we had 88. We sold 40 of it, and it does make sense that we would have 48 left. So this is not a count where you close that. Uh, this book should be closed with a new balance. Or if, did we not join the book? 
Well, none of this gets closed. It's like an on. So the thing about perpetual, it means it's constantly moving. Ongoing. Ongoing. Okay. Exactly. So, you know, we just continue. I mean, obviously my little sheet is, is, is cut off at this point, but this would just go on and on and on and on. You're constantly monitoring your inventory. It's like, you know, imagine you going into Costco or BJ's or Sam's club. And, you know, every time you walk in there, they just have tons of stuff people are buying and they keep putting stuff on the shelves. So the inventory well, just would, goes up and down. Would that be a permanent, uh, where you just, when it go on and on, so it don't never get closed out. Correct. So okay. the account that we're referencing is inventory and inventory is considered a current asset. So okay. assets never get closed. It's what you have on hand, right? Right. Okay. Okay. So the only accounts that ever get closed, as we saw in this last discussion board, are revenues, expenses, and drawing. Those are the only ones that ever get closed. Right. Assets, liabilities, and capital, they just go up and down, up and down, right up now. and down. They never get closed. They're permanent. And this right. is one of those permanent accounts. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it yeah. goes down, but it's always there. Okay. Okay, great question. Paula, any questions? No, I understand. Okay, great. Nice to hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's now do the exact same problem I wrote the data again, but now we're going to do it under LIFO. And just keep in mind a couple of things before we get started. This $48, six at eight, so we've got six units left at $8 a piece, it totaled 48, okay? So let's just kind of, uh, I don't know, I'll put this in, I'll put this 48 in yellow, make it stand out. And I also want us to look at the total cost of goods sold. So between the $40, let's do this. So between the $12 and the $40, the total cost ended up being 52. So 12 plus 40. 52 bucks. I want to just have us remember these two numbers because when we're done doing perpetual under LIFO, I want to come back and say, what were the numbers we got at the bottom? Let's compare the two. So I'm going to make some predictions right now. Okay. And this is based on the notes that I gave earlier. And Paula, you missed this. So let me just retype this thing for you or just paste it for you, okay? So when you have periods of inflation and we definitely have inflation in the data, our stuff started at $2, then we had to pay $4, then we had to pay $8. That's an example of rising prices or inflation. And what I said was, when you have inflation, the best technique is to use LIFO, the one we're about to do right now, because under LIFO, you get a larger expense. You get more write-off. You get a bigger cost of goods sold. So what we're predicting, if under FIFO, the cost of goods sold was 52, 12, and 40, I am predicting that when we're done with LIFO, we're going to have a bigger number than 52. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to have a lower number in the inventory balance than 48. So cost of goods sold will be higher. The balance will be lower. So that's my prediction based on the definition that I gave you. Okay. So let's see if I'm a liar. Okay. Let's see if what I said actually comes true. So we're now doing the exact same problem, but now we're doing it under LIFO. We've already entered the beginning inventory, January 1st, 10 at two, uh, $20. So now we're moving on to January 3rd. So let's record the purchase. We got four units, four at four. 
for a total of $16. So it looks a lot like what we did earlier. We're gonna add that to our existing inventory. So what do we have currently in our inventory? We've got 10 at two, and now we have a new four at four. So our inventory balance, 20 plus 16, we've got $36 worth of inventory. Okay. So on each date, and I'm purposely putting each date in different colors so that I can really make the balance column stand out here. So on each date, I have to show exactly what I have in inventory because the most common question is, what do I got to write 10 at two again if I already had 10 at two? It's a great question. And the reason is, is I had 10 at two on January 1st. What if I didn't have access? What if this page, what if I had like a thousand transactions on January 3rd? You know, mm -hmm. it'd be really tough to go find that one on January 2nd, on January 1st. So imagine you didn't see January 1st. You should be able to know exactly what's in your inventory on this date. So in other words, imagine going into your inventory and taking a picture at the end of each day. What do I have? Well, I've got these $2 ones in inventory. I've got these $4 ones in inventory. Got 10 of those, four of those. I need to know exactly what's in my inventory on each date. So after the first one, it seems a little weird, but then as you saw when we did this one, you know, it's, you're, you're tracking the stuff step by step by step. So right now, if you look at January 1st and January 3rd, they're exactly the same under FIFO and LIFO. And that's because we haven't sold anything yet. You don't start seeing changes until you sell. So right now, it's exactly like FIFO. But now, we're about to do January 10th, and we're going to see our first change between the two, the two examples. So on January 10th, we sold eight. So remember, Gloria, when we were doing this up here, we took all six from the $2 group because we were doing FIFO. First ones in are the first ones out. But now that we're under LIFO, we got to go last, last ones one that came in first are one the first out. ones out. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go four at four. And I need a total of six. So now I'm going to grab the other two from the $2 group. So we're doing it in reverse. The last ones that came in are the first ones we get rid of. Yeah. So math-wise, we're going to go four times four. And then we're going to add the result of multiplying two times two. So I come up with $20. Mm -hmm. And, you know, four times four is 16, two times two is four, 16 plus four is 20. So now in our inventory, what do I have left after selling six of the units? What's left exactly? Nothing. Nothing. Wait, 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 You got four units left? Well, let's see. The four at four are totally gone. So by doing this, these are gone. And I got rid of two of the $2 group. So I have eight so, left. Eight left at $2. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. So when we were told to sell six, we had a total of 14 that we had in inventory. And if we sold six, we should have eight left. Eight, okay, yeah. Okay. So we got rid of the last ones that came in. So four at four were gone. Okay. And that means I need another two more and they're coming from the $2 group. So I'm left with eight at two. So my inventory value is now $16. And that makes sense. I had $36 worth. I sold $20 worth. Yeah. worth. I got $16 worth. But let's take a quick peek up top and compare. When we did it under... FIFO, 
all six came from the two dollar group the first ones in were the first ones out look at the cost of goods sold already so under fifo my cost was 12 under lifo i get a bigger write-off i get to write off 20 dollars instead of 12. and look at my inventory balance it was 24 and now my inventory is showing only 16 dollars but i still have eight eight units still eight units but they're valued differently okay so we're starting to see how LIFO is different than FIFO. Let's do, let's do January 17th. <clears throat> On January 17th, it says we bought eight units and these eight cost us $8. So that's a total of 64. So now my inventory consists of eight at two plus the new eight at eight. So basically I'm gonna go $64 added to the 16 that was there. So now my inventory value is 80 bucks worth of inventory. I've got eight units at two and I have eight units at eight. So then we get to January 31st. And on January 31st, it said we sold 10. So, eight, eight, eight. so how are we going, which 10 are we selling? The eight at eight. Beautiful. And then, um, the eight at eight. And then two, two at two. Two at two. Good job. Okay. So what are we left with in inventory? Um, two, two at two. No, wait, wait, we could wait, try. Wait, wait, wait. We did all eight. Remember the $8 ones are gone and only two of the $2 ones are gone. Oh, so we have six. Six, right. Good job. So six at... The eight dollars. Oh, eight dollars. I'm sorry. No, you're right. Two dollars. My bad. Yeah. I looked at the at the wrong line for a quick second. So we have six at two dollars left, and that turns out to be twelve bucks. Twelve dollars. Okay. So look at our final answer. Inventory. We had six left over before, but those six were valued at $8 each. So on the books, we would show we have $48 worth of inventory. But under LIFO, those same six are valued at $2 a piece, and we're putting $12 as the value of the inventory. So I know it's Twelve dollars doesn't seem like. Imagine this was in thousands or millions, you know. So if we said we had twelve million dollars worth of inventory in this one, we would say we'd have forty-eight million dollars worth of inventory. Yet it's still six units. So talk about being able to manipulate the books legally. This is what we're allowed to do. Take a look at our write-off. How much do we get to write off? Well, under. If you recall, under FIFO, 12 plus 40 gave me 52. So imagine this was in thousands. I had a $52,000 write-off. Now under LIFO, same information, I get to write off 88,000. Can mm -hmm. you imagine? So you're paying a lot less tax because you get to write more off by using LIFO. And the only reason why LIFO is better than FIFO in this example is because we have inflationary numbers. Yeah. Prices went from two 
to four to eight. And that's why LIFO will give you the best results, okay? If the prices were going down, if they were going five, then four, then three, then life, then excuse me, then FIFO would have been the best one for tax purposes. Okay. So uh, the bottom line is whichever you have to know if your scenario is, you know, inflationary or deflationary, and that's the technique, you know, you're going to pick the appropriate technique that fits that situation. So, um, you know, so depending on what industry you're in, uh, you're going to be using either FIFO or LIFO. You can't use both. You're not going to be switching on and off. You know, you pick one method and you're pretty much always using that method from year to year to year. Okay. All right. So now let's do the most accurate of the techniques. And that is specific identification. All right. And specific identification uh, is the most accurate of the four techniques, but the least seldomly used because we're not going for accuracy when we do this. We're going for tax break. We're going for which one is going to give us the best tax break. So with specific identification, I had to be a more specific on which ones I actually sell. Okay. So remember before it's like, hey, first ones in are the first ones we sell. The last ones in are the last ones we sell. But under specific identification, we know exactly which ones we sold. So if you notice, when we get to January 10th, I, sell, I said something like, hey, the six that we sell, they came from the $2 group. On January 31st, the 10 that we sell, six came from January 17th two came from January 3rd, and two came from January 1st. We know ex exactly which ones we sold, okay? So I had to just alter the data a little bit so that we can do this technique. So let me start doing this one. So we've already entered the beginning date, uh, 10 units at $2. So now let's go ahead and do January 3rd. And on January 3rd, we purchased four at $4. So that's 16. So it seems like we do the purchases the same way, no matter what technique we're using. In our balance column, um, it honestly doesn't matter which order we record things, but we'll just keep things chronological. We've got 10 at two. And we've got four at four. So 20 plus the 16 gives us 36. So right now looks the same as the previous two. So when we get to January 10th, It says we sold six. Now, unlike with FIFO and LIFO, FIFO first ones in are gone. LIFO last ones in are gone. With specific identification, we know exactly which ones. So in the instructions I have here, the six came from the $2 group. It may be a coincidence that it looks like FIFO, might be a coincidence coincidence that's all it is it's a coincidence so we're being told the six are worth two dollars a piece so what are we left with in inventory we have four of the two dollars and we have four of the four dollars So the only difference between FIFO and LIFO is the so whoa, what's going on here? Thirty six minus twelve. 
Well, I keep hitting the wrong number on my keyboard. There we go. <clears throat> so 36 minus 12, that tells us we've got $24 worth of inventory. Okay, so now let's go to January 17th. And on January 17th, it says we bought eight more at $8, total of 64. So our inventory now is made up of four units at two. We've got four units at four. And now we've got eight units at eight. Okay. So 24 plus the 64, our total inventory balance is $88 worth of inventory. So now when I go to do January 31st, it's 10, okay? Same, same as we've had before, sold 10, we sold 10, but now instead of saying LIFO and FIFO, we are told exactly which 10. So according to this, we sold six from January 17th. So that's, so we're going to put $8. here six at $8, right? We were also told that two came from January 3rd. Those were the $4 ones. Four, yeah. Okay. And we're also told two from January 1st. And the January 1st one's worth $2 each. So the difference between this method and the ones we previously did is that this one, we know exactly which ones we're selling. We're not just saying, let's just take the first ones or let's just take the last ones. Here we know exactly which ones. So let me do this math here real quick. So six times eight. 60. Okay, and then we've got two times four. It's a lot easier to do this in my head than it is uh, using Excel, but I'm still going to go through it anyways, and we'll confirm the answer that you said, and there it is, 60. 60. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. now, what do we have left in inventory? Do we have any of the $2 left? We have one. No, we have two $2. We have two of those, right? Well, two of the two dollar ones. Do we have any of the four dollar left? I think we've got two of those left because we just sold two of them. Yes. And how many do we have left of the eight dollar ones? Six. No, no, no. A two. I'm sorry. Two. That's right. No. So we got crazy twos going here. I'm going to pay them in a lottery. <laughs> <laughs> and our final answer in inventory is 28. We put that answer in yellow. And then look at our result of 12 plus the 60. So under this technique, we get a $72 write-off. Under LIFO, I got an $88 write-off. Under FIFO, I got a $52 write-off. So, so far, the best one for taxes is LIFO. I had the biggest write-off. SID actually ends up being better than FIFO in this example. So any questions on these three methods so far? Mm -hmm. We got one more to go and then we'll be done. And this last one is called weighted average. And what I'm gonna do real quick, just to save us a little bit of time, is the one advantage of weighted average 
is that everything is done, every date is done on one line. So I, if I have five transactions, I only need five lines. So January 1st, January 3rd, January 10th, January 17th, and January 31st. So already it's the shortest of the four. And we need five lines to do this. Okay. So this one though, you probably need your calculator because we're going to have to do some, instead of just adding and subtracting, uh, you may have to do a division. You know, instead of just a multiplication, we may have to do a division here. So bear with me here. Okay, so we've already done January 1st, 10 units at two. So now on January 3rd, we bought four at four, $16. But now the way we do the balance column, totally different than we did the other ones. In the other ones, we were able to show exactly the units times the price. Now we're doing averaging. So you want to do this. I had 10 units. I just bought four more. I now have 14 units. So we don't care the breakdown. We're now just looking at just totals. I had... $20 worth of inventory. I just bought $16 worth of more inventory. So I now have $36 worth of inventory. So now to get my unit price, I go 36 divided by 14. So if I take 36 and I divide it by 14 units, my price is now, now I probably need to uh, increase the decimal here. There we go. So look at my unit price now. So it's not very pretty. So each unit, each of these 14 now carry a value of over $2.57 each. So it's incorporating the new increased price along with the old price that we, or old cost, that we paid. So now we're going to go sell and we're going to sell the six. There's no breakdown. We don't go oh, some of them at two, some of it at two. Nope. The, the price that we're, the cost that we're going to go with forward is this number right here. So all six are coming from that new cost that we just calculated. So six multiplied by this 2.57, and it just probably goes on and on and on, rounds out to about $15.43. I'm gonna put all of our money here in cents as well. So if I had 14 units and I sold six, 14 minus six is eight, and I'm just going to bring down that value. Whoops. 36 minus the $15.43. Our inventory balance is 20.57, just 36 minus the $15.43. So right now, I have eight left of the 2.571 average price. Remember, this is weighted average. So it's constantly working with averages, not specifics. This 2.571 will only change when we buy stuff. So speaking of buying stuff, eight units. Eight, total is 64. So now my inventory was eight. I just added eight more. So I'm up to 16. 
my dollars, I had $20.57 worth of inventory. I'm now at $84.57 because I had to add $64 worth of more inventory. So how do I get my new unit costs? 84.57 divided by the 16 units. And I'm looking at a little over $5.28 a piece. That's how much this stuff is costing me now when I take all of my inventory into account. Because some of the stuff cost me two, some of it cost me four, some of it cost me eight. On average, the stuff is costing me about $5.29 a piece. And now I have to sell 10 of them. Oops. And the 10 will come out at that 5.286. So out of the 16 that I had, I only have six left. And just to check, two plus two plus two, six left, six left, six left. Okay, so we've had six left every time. And just bring that down. This times that. And our final result is $31.71. Let me put that in yellow. Total cost of goods sold in this technique, 15 bucks plus the 52 bucks approximately. So about $68.29. So if you compare 68 bucks to 72, SID's better. Compared to LIFO, LIFO is better. FIFO, that's the worst one out of them all in this particular case. And that's where we are today. Any questions, any comments on what we did today? No. No. All right. So hopefully, you know, from what you were learning with your IntelliPath, you know, this helped a little bit with that understanding. Remember that this week you do not have IntelliPath, you have that individual assignment. And in that individual assignment, you are just doing journal entries. So um, if you go back to chat two and you rewatch chat two, it will help you tremendously with this assignment that's due this week. In chat two, I did the journal, the ledger and the trial balance. All they want you to do for this week is just the journal part. So you're just doing step one. So if you know your debits and credits and you know your journal entries, uh, you should be able to kick some butt on this, on this assignment. And if you think you're weak, go back and watch uh, chat number two. Or uh, if you go back and look through the announcements, I also posted uh, a link to my YouTube video uh, where I do the same thing there as well. Okay, any questions? No. All right. No. Well, you guys have a great week. And next week is our last session. So I can't believe we're almost done. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.